Welcome back to My Bonsai. I'm Chris, and I thought maybe you guys might want to have a little look at some of the uh, plants that I've been propagating and trying to grow. Uh, let's get to it. Alright, so we'll just start this in. And I've got a few more plants besides these that are sort of in uh, the hospital, if you will. We had a heat wave. We had like, I don't know, 108, 109 here a few days ago. Kind of roasted some stuff while I was out of town. This here is a valley oak, and uh, this was collected out of my father-in-law's uh, tomato garden. So he was going to cut it out. You know, I figured I'd save it. And uh, this one here, if you can see down here, it has this really cool shape. This is all natural, all the way to here. This was actually the taproot. The acorn was attached here, and bird picked it off for me here a little while back, but. Uh, I grew it all the way up to here, and now it's, uh, I kind of picked out the tip, and now we're getting some back budding down here, so hopefully we can do that. These are, uh, the reason I wanted to grow this, this is a pretty iconic plant here in California, and they grow all over the place in my area. In fact, if I pan around, there is a very large one right here in my neighbor's yard. So that tree is every bit of 75 feet tall and wide. And, uh, oh, it's, it's pretty old. It's probably older than all the houses in the neighborhood. Uh, anyway, this here is uh, a blue cypress, and I can't remember exactly the varietal, but uh, the wife bought it and wanted to grow the yard. I kind of thought it was going to end up being a little too big, so I figured I would make sure that it stayed small. Anyway. Uh, kind of put a little bit of an S-curve in this thing. We've got a bunch of extra branches here that are all going to have to get removed, but for now I left them on because I want to try and maintain some strength and thicken up the trunk a bit. Well, that's my blue cypress. And down here, this is a uh, Japanese boxwood. And uh, if you look at the trunk, it actually has a pretty interesting trunk already. Uh, Hopefully I can heal over all these scars I've put into it, but at the moment, no real styling on this thing. Just trying to get it into a, a nice basic shape. So I've got two of these, but this is a Japanese maple seedling that was also collected from my fa father-in-law's house. Uh, they, they probably have six or seven Japanese maple trees. Uh, I had collected three of them. Here's the other one. Uh, one of them was had red leaves, but uh, it didn't make it. So that's the way it goes, you know. So now another thing that's pretty important to my area is a grape. This is a uh, just a seedling that come up at the winery. I work for a winery, and uh, I plucked this out of the ground and potted it up. And see what we can make out of that. What else have we got here? Here's a Chinese elm. Kind of cute little tree. Um, I purchased this just a couple of weeks ago, so I haven't really done anything to this tree. But it looks it looks pretty okay. Now, here is a Japanese black pine. And uh, when I bought it, it was straight as an arrow. Whoops, almost drop it. <laughs> But uh, I put the wire on here and gave it some twists. Got a couple of buds here facing us right now, and one more branch facing that way. I'm hoping to get something to grow out the top. That's part of why I left a lot of the, you know, old needles on there. That will help encourage back budding. All right, and this one here. This is kind of a cool tree. This is a, a cork oak, which I collected this acorn a few miles away from here. There's couple of cork oaks grown in uh, in town. Here is, this, oh, it's a crepe myrtle. So these are some uh, some cuttings that I took from uh, also my father-in-law's crepe myrtle tree. And this one's doing really good. Yeah, there's another one in there, which uh, I don't know if that one's going to make it or not, but it's all right. I only really need one, right? At least I keep trying to tell myself that. 
Except I've got two more cuttings right here, which are also growing, putting on some new leaves. That's good. And, uh, oh, oh, that's not good news. <laughs> well, I'm guessing this cutting isn't going to make it. So, I'll have to set that aside. These are victims, I think, of the uh, heat wave we had while I was out in town. Uh, this is some uh, fruitless olives, also cuttings. Uh, they're not looking super great right now, but uh, we'll, we'll see if they'll pull through. If not, well, the tree grows across the street, so I'm, I'm sure my neighbor will let me cut, take some more cuttings. And here is a uh, Chinese wisteria. And this one, you can see the trunk has got kind of a cool little curve in it and stuff. It's got a little inverse taper issue going on. Uh, but this was a sucker off of my, my big Chinese wisteria, and it was wrapped around another, another trunk that was growing out of the ground. So I pulled this off and pottered it up, and it uh, seems to be doing pretty good. So later on, hopefully we can get some volunteer shoots to come out here somewhere and we can continue on and have a really interesting tree. Here's the uh, bougainvillea we just did in the last video. Uh, not much to say about that except that I I did wire it uh, just to kind of try to control things. See if I can get my hand in here and then uh, the branch that I was going to make my leader. Well, of course, after the video I broke that off. So that was uh, suboptimal, but I think this branch will get us somewhere. If not, these things are supposed to be pretty vigorous growers, so we should get something new to volunteer up. And right here is a couple more uh, valley oak trees. Uh, these are acorns that I collected from here on the property. Actually, I think these, these may have already sprouted, and I uh, dug them up and planted them in this basket. Right here, I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I bought some uh, Japanese black pine seeds. And I don't know, we'll put them in there. I haven't seen anything happen yet, so they may be duds or they may have to be out over the winter before they'll sprout. So we'll let the experiment ride until next year. We'll see what happens. Okay, you have to pay, uh, pay no attention to the succulents in the background there for some landscaping. But right here I've got some... Uh, some cuttings I took of my uh, lavender, and they were <laughs> they were doing really good before I went on vacation. But you know everything sort of got hurt, so I put all the plants that are in <laughs> in need of help here on the porch because they get a little bit less direct light. Uh, this, in fact, these three plants are all uh, Chinese pistache and. Uh, also collected those at work. They seed ridiculously heavy, and uh, so I, I collected a few, few little seedlings after they had sprouted. They're gonna all get killed off before they can grow anywhere. They're growing right around the base of the tank, so they go through with Roundup and kill everything. And I don't know if this one is gonna make it. I think it may have died, but uh, this was a black locust tree found the, the seed blowing down the street when I was on a walk with the kids and uh, there was two of them one of them came up and then this one of course got roasted in the heat wave. Oh, anyway for now I'll keep watering it we may get lucky and may butt out some new leaves but if it doesn't uh, this is also a very common tree in the area I don't want to grow one because they got really cool bark and when I was a kid growing up, we had a whole bunch of them on the property. Uh, they were generally kind of considered a bit of a weed sometimes, but uh, it's extremely rot resistant. They have a lot of really good virtues, uh, but they do spread like crazy. And uh, they also have thorns very much like roses on them, so they can be a bit of a problem sometimes.